I just got back from testing FSD supervised in the city. And if you had asked me before that experience, if I thought FSD was worth $10,000 here in Australia, I probably would have said no until it basically drove me an hour and a half flawlessly from the countryside right into the center of the city. And it was in that moment I could truly feel the potential of this software. In fact, if there was footage of me merging off the freeway, you would have seen tears in my eyes. I actually got emotional just experiencing it driving through the city so well. Now, FSD supervised at the time of recording this is early access only, so I am lucky to be one of the few that is putting it through its paces right now. But Tesla have stated that it's gonna be rolling out wide to everyone else soon. So the long wait for FSD in this country is almost over. So firstly, how does FSD behave around trams in Melbourne? Well, I did about an hour of testing specifically with trams, mostly around the suburbs where they share the road with cars. And for the most part, it handled them very much like a human would. I couldn't get it to successfully overtake on its own. It was happy to just hang behind the tram. But on the occasions where I manually got it into the right position, impressively, it did wait for pedestrians and waited for the flashing lights before proceeding. And then once they close, it should proceed. On occasion, it did creep forward a little too much and I had to manually hit the brakes in case there were pedestrians coming off the tram. On the times when I put it in position to overtake and engaged FSD, it didn't seem to want to pick up much speed at all, but it turns out it's actually a rule to not pass trams beyond 10 kilometers an hour in Melbourne. So I can't be sure that FSD knew this, but it certainly did have a good amount of caution around trams and it did not really want to seem to overtake them. When it comes to driving on tram tracks, more often than not, FSD seem to still position the car in the center of the lane. So occasionally you could feel the tires being pulled by the tracks. But then also we had multiple occasions where it went off center a little bit and it did feel more comfortable and more human-like. There was one critical intervention I needed to make, which actually I didn't capture on camera, but essentially the car tried to turn onto a tram exclusive lane. So I did have to grab the steering wheel and pull us back into the road. The visualization on screen renders the tram as a bus or a truck, but the visuals that we're seeing in FSD are quite limited. So it doesn't mean that FSD doesn't understand this is a tram. There would be thousands upon thousands of hours of data from Teslas driving around Melbourne, teaching the system how to interact with trams. Something else that is quite unique in Melbourne is hook turns. So basically, if you wanna make a right turn, you need to go in the far left lane and wait for your traffic light to go red and for the opposing direction to go green before proceeding. So actually, they're pretty complicated and still most people in the city don't seem to understand them. Now, the biggest hurdle I found for FSD during my testing was it didn't seem to wanna to move into that far left lane. Okay, so it's not getting us in the hook turn lane. On occasion, it would actually put its right blinker on as if it was just gonna make a standard right turn at that intersection. So in my experience, I needed to actually manually disengage FSD and put the car into position. But aside from that, impressively, it seemed to know exactly what to do to wait for the green light in the opposing direction before it would smoothly proceed. And again, we got honked for being too slow, but the car was actually doing the right thing, which was pretty amazing to see. Orange, okay. I feel like that was pretty good. Something else that's been really interesting to see is feeling FSD dynamically adjust its speed based on the current road conditions. So for example, yesterday we were driving in heavy rain on a country back road, and even though the speed limit was 100 kilometers an hour, the car actually sat around 70, which felt much more comfortable and safe. And I even had one of the Tesla engineers comment on my post saying the car can adjust the speed based on detected road conditions, tire wear, and torque. So yeah, quite the improvement over your standard autopilot. 
I have also noticed that the max speed isn't restricted to speed zones like it is with autopilot. And this is especially great for those times when the car thinks it's in a slower speed zone than it actually is. You can now just pump up the max speed, whereas autopilot would normally restrict you to a maximum of 10 kilometers an hour over the speed limit, unless you're on the highway. One thing I absolutely love about having FSC on highway driving is you can just put your indicator on and basically tell the system that you want to change lanes and it'll just do it so smoothly. If you have a city commute, this is easily worth $10,000. It just makes it so relaxing. It's changing lanes for me. It's taking all the stress out. It's just phenomenal the way that this thing drives. It's driving itself. The full self-driving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love it. He's seen my videos and he's excited that this car is doing full self-driving. And the last point I wanted to make, which is a really important one, is that in my experience, FSD works so much better when you key in a navigation destination and you let the car do its thing. You don't interrupt too much. Whereas what I've been doing in all these videos is often disengaging, engaging, trying to put it in these different scenarios. And that's when it can often make mistakes. It's good to remember that your experience as a non-content creator that's just going where you want to go will probably be much more enjoyable than trying to create all these different environments. Perfectly stops for this lady. How good's that? Saw that she had the intention of crossing. Yeah, it's kind of waiting. Anyone want to cross? No, we're going to move on. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. I do have more FSD content coming soon, so stay tuned for that, and I'll catch you soon in another video. The fact that this car is even attempting this park? Wow. <laughs> and with a pedestrian to our left. That was amazing.